Okay, so uh, week uh, two, day two. Um, yeah, I think I'm probably going to just start like labeling it by that because that's probably easier to follow. But uh, okay, so today uh, I had a presentation and uh, overall I think it went pretty well. One of the things I did learn is make sure you combine your presentations appropriately. So what do I mean by that? Like the first half of my presentation was like a pitch and like the actual code. Later in the presentation, I did like a, here's the issues I came up with. These two don't really go well together. Like the first part is like, hey, I have this awesome idea. I made an awesome project. Here's how it didn't work and how I suck. Like it doesn't really go as well together as it should. That's probably the most important thing I learned from the, uh, like actually going through the presentation. Like it should match pretty well, at least for what you're trying to do. So if you're trying to pitch, you probably shouldn't be talking about the errors. If you're trying to talk about the errors, then you probably shouldn't be pitching. Like what you were saying, you should be very clear about it and actually like be able to disambiguate and put things in their proper place. Um, then in the morning, uh, we went over three texts. Um, the first was the iterator. Uh, an iterator is pretty much a for loop, but it applies to collections, it seems. So it allows you to go through elements, change them up, and like it goes through element A in a list, B in a list, C in a list. And like it allows you to change, delete, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, pretty similar to a for loop, just more collections and you can add and remove stuff. Um, let's see, for each, I already brought that up. Uh, scanner, I uh, used scanners in some of the previous projects, so I already knew this, but uh, it's pretty much allows user input data, more or less. Um, recursion, this I had a little bit of the difficulty with. It seems like it's a method that calls itself. So, for example, we did a factorial thing. Um, you had like, if you inputted five, it would call like, okay, n minus n times this, and then you'd keep on going back and back and back. Um, I mean, I think that that's about all I need to know. I'd like to see a couple more applications in the future, but um, yeah, that seems to be about it. Um, so now, in the afternoon, uh, we had uh, quality control, which was more or less a couple people came in and just tested the entire class. Uh, overall, I thought it went well. Like, I, I don't think it went nearly as badly as people made it out to be. Uh, the two things where I was like, okay, yeah, you need to work on that. Like, our class needs to work on them were uh, constructors and uh, interfaces versus abstractions. These were the two where I'm like, okay, we need a little work there. So constructors, um, pretty much they allow for the instantiation of an object. And you can create a new instance in like a different class by uh, class name equals new uh, class and allows you to uh, fill in like the various parameters and make a new instance of a given object. Um, I think that makes sense. Um, like most of them weren't even able to put that. So at least I'm able to BS an answer. I'm pretty sure that's correct though. Um, abstract, uh, abstract, uh, abstract classes versus interfaces. Uh, they both can't be instantiated. They both have method that, methods that need to be implemented in like later classes, but aren't necessarily implemented in like the actual class. Uh, the main way to differentiate the two, in my opinion, is just by remembering that abstract classes are more or less just classes. So they're like subject to the, you can only inherit once. You can't inherit from multiple. You can't have like the V, you can't do like this. Um, and it also allows for like um, variables, constructors, and this, that type of stuff. Interfaces are an entirely different beast. Um, you can implement multiple interfaces. So you can have like inter implements A, implements B. You can also, an interface can also extend multiple different other interfaces. So if you have interface A, it can, inter uh, it can extend interface B and interface C. I don't know why you would want to do that, but you can. Um, I think that's about where they were wanting to go with that. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, because uh, QC, like, it needed a little more, uh, we needed a little more work, so we went primarily over that in the afternoon. Um, I mean, there was a couple of things that we didn't really talk about uh, in the actual class that because uh, they came up in the QC, we ended up, I ended up looking up. Uh, there's two types of memory in Java. One is for uh, variables and methods. The other is for uh, objects. That's the two types of um, memory. Uh, I don't really get the typed. Apparently there's like typed, like there are various different types 
a programming language like static dynamic and it seems to be like where the memory is located is it just in the object or is it object plus some other stuff still don't fully understand that i don't think i need to because we didn't go over it or if we do we will uh four versus four each uh four each seems to be the more particular case it applies just it's more or less the for loop if you do like the plus plus um that seems to be what that is um, default versus no args, uh, pretty much the same thing. One just calls the superclass, the other one doesn't. Um, finally, final, finally, and finalized, we didn't go over. Um, exceptions we're going to go over later. Um, default method. Uh, that I have to look up. And, uh, okay. So that was pretty much it. There's a couple of things I need to look up from uh, that, but... Overall, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Day two. Uh, week two, day two. Uh, done. So, uh, yeah.